Do you remember this from last week's episode? Well, this week's episode has... Well, I'm not going to tell you what's on this week's episode. You just have to watch for yourself. But there might be a bit of that. Cuba has a real problem. There are just too many lobsters. In fact, if you leave your dinghy on the water overnight, it will be sunk by the morning. All the lobsters jumping in, trying to have some fun. Yes siree Bob, there are so many lobsters here, there is not enough holes for them to hide in. There's more a eel in this little cave. Let's see if it's hungry. Yep, that's hungry. Let's get him another. And another. Enough spectating, Plucky. We need dinner. Hang on a minute. That looks like one of those strange fish. Let's back that up for a sec. Oh no, that is a trunk fish I'm stalking. AKA triangle fish. Sometimes I call them helicopter fish because they spin around their vertical axis. My God, have I stooped that low? Now let me explain. We had dinner with the Cubans and this triangle fish came up in the discussion and they said I should get one because it tastes different. So I thought I'd give it a crack. It is one crazy looking fish, and if I didn't know any better, it sort of looks poisonous to me, but apparently it's not. But first, I have to get away from the reef. It has armor plating, except right near the tail. A flat bottom. We were just talking about it the other night with the locals and they say it's excellent but it doesn't, it's not like fish at all. So well, there's certainly no skill in it, I'll only get one just to try it. Apparently there's three fillets because it's triangular shaped. It's like a triangular prism, fillet, fillet and then an underneath fillet. So let's go see the locals and see how we, um, cause this is like armor and see what they do. First take off all the corners, which is pretty hard to do because it is tough plating. Then hook your blade underneath one of the plates and the whole plate will come off. And if you leave the tail, then when you have got all the plates off, it will come off as a cluster with the tail as a handle. I would never have shot this fish if it wasn't for the Cubans. Uh, they say it's unbelievable fish. It's got a consistency that's not like fish and a taste that's not like fish. So let's test it. Well, for starters, it feels a bit like chicken.
and the consistency is more like chicken. There is a delicate uh, fishy flavour, which means, of course, that lots of people are going to like it because people don't like the strong flavour of fish anyway. So I'd say it's uh, more like chicken than fish. There you go. There's another thing that tastes like chicken. Hmm. Tastes like chicken. So the verdict is, I mean, it's edible. I wouldn't say it's great. It'd probably be good in a curry where it absorbs the flavour of other things. But I think this is going to be the first and last uh, trunk fish I ever shoot because certainly there's no skill in it at all. And it's a bit fiddly doing the um, filleting. Although there's no bones at it all, in it at all. All you have to do is get through the outer armour and peel it away and then you've got your fillets already there basically. But, you know, if you were going hungry and there was one there and your gun was already aiming at it and it pulled the trigger, well, you'd eat it for dinner. But other than that, I'll probably give it a miss. We're going to be living soon and here in the island they have um, a well with fresh water so we're going to be filling up the jerry cans and putting some on the um, on the tank because we don't know when we're going to have access to fresh water again. This well water is the nicest I have ever tasted so knowing that Cayo Largo, our next stop, does not have water for us at all which seems amazing because it is a resort island we will take as much as we can get from here. I'm going to leave here completely full plus all jerry cans giving us 600 litres in total. Margarita's family is joining us for a week so we need all the water we can get. almost got some in. I worked out that we had averaged 4.5 litres per person per day since leaving the Caymans. You may think this is small, but this is not us being conservative at all. Since when we found out there was a well here, we went to town. Party time. Try to imagine everything from cooking, drinking, washing and showers being under 5 litres per person per day. Now try to imagine doing all of that with 2.5 litres per day. That's when we are isolated. That's what it's like being on a boat. always manage to choose the worst days to um, do water. With any luck in this wind, I may get some in. Well, it was blowing 25 knots. It seems to have dropped down to 20. I don't know what it is with us, but we always do water when it's choppy as, and it's hard to get the jerry cans up, and you stub your toes. It's a real pain in the bum. 
but we've just put in what close to 200 litres of water so we should be sweet Earlier that day when I went spearing, it was blowing 20 to 25 knots. There was no way I was going on the outer reef, so it was in the murky shallows we go. I'm using this PVC pipe and noose to place the loop behind and underneath the tail. Basically it's just a PVC pipe with some rigid wire or some mono in it that constricts when you pull it at the end. It never ceases to amaze me how they don't get freaked out by the pipe. I mean if I went anywhere near with my hands they go straight to the back of the cave. Using this noose, it's just too easy. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ban myself from it and just use my hands. You just can't make things too easy, people. Now to get some conch. Yes siree, people, it's gonna be a smoggers board tonight, indeed. Bloody hell, I'm running out of hands. As you can see, conch are immensely difficult to get, requiring great skill and speed. This lobster has nowhere to go. I can still see where it is through this hole. All I have to do is reach in and grab it. Not a happy camper. Okay, not looking too bad. Now all we need is a fish. Check out this lobster. I'm going to call it Napoleon. He is making advances at me and he just keeps at it. Oh no, there's the missus. One to be feared, I reckon. We better get the hell out of here. We have plenty anyway, so let's let them be. This is a bigger conch. I'll swap it with one of the others. We have too many, so now to sort the ones which are the best.
like today. The wind's blowing hard, the visits are that great, but we still gotta go out and get some food. Now we got plenty of food for today and today. We're feeding seven, so it should be good. Um, we don't have the luxury to, um, like a lot of people have fridges and freezers. I kind of like it like that, so it forces me to go out and do what I like to do. The conditions, when they're a bit iffy, it's even better. All right, well, I'm going back. We've got plenty. Now comes a lot of work preparing the seafood. hole about here and then use a flexible knife to cut the foot away from the shell on the inside by sliding the knife backwards and forwards. Grab the claw and pull. If it doesn't come out too easy then you go back to the knife and cut away some more. Cut off the skirts and flaps and anything that resembles skin. Cut off the stalks and eyes and then find the soft bit along the body where the guts are. Just cut out this channel. the hell out of it and don't wear your nicest shirt. The Cubans don't do this but they have a pressure cooker but I still think it's better to bash it. It definitely makes it more tender. Cut as thinly as you can. This guy is trying to escape. Check out the eyes on the stalks people. going to take a long time. Here comes my little beautiful, ready no doubt to give me some words of wisdom. I tell you, I don't know how I live without my buttercup in my previous life. With all the things that I do wrong, it is a wonder that I survived at all. I am the luckiest guy in the world. That was a quick lesson. But wait, there's going to be more. Oh, goody. I get two bits of wisdom today. That can only be a good thing, people, because now I'm more likely to survive another day knowing how to do things exactly a certain way because no other way is acceptable. I mean, I don't want to die or have the world explode, which apparently is the logical result of my poor actions, do I? I know what you're thinking out there. Now that is a lucky guy. And you'd be right. On almost every sailing vlog out there, the cooks overcook their seafood, especially the lobsters. So here's a suggestion. Don't boil the lobster first and then cut the shell and scoop out the meat. Yes, it is easy to do it this way, but it's better to work with the flesh raw like this. That way you cook the flesh in your meal and all the juices flow into your meal. Otherwise, if you boil it first, you lose all those juices and flavours. Onion, cabbage, conch, smashed tomatoes, salt and spice it to taste, bay leaves and white wine, and you cook it until the cabbage is a bit soft. I don't know what it is with stews, but all stews require cabbage in my opinion. It just gives that that certain sort of flavour.
Kura, Langosta, Hodia, I don't know what they are, plantains, beans and, and rice, and margaritas, wonderful conch, conch stew. And we got zipper. some fish over there too. Woohoo! Okay. It's our last dinner and they're very you happy. Know, they're know. very happy for um, us to go. <laughs> Actually, it's a bit of a sad time. We've spent so much time here, it's bloody awesome. It's very sad. I don't want to go at all, but well. Let's go, Margarita. Our last dinner with the Cuban family. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Cardo. Let's go, let's go. Cardo. That's my langosta. Margarita's langosta. What? No, no, burrito. Cobo. Margarita. 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 Luis, Wilson, Don, Arnaldo, and of course, Patricia. <laughs> Farewell to our wonderful Cuban friends. We will miss you.